Here at Toastroopers HQ, we love taking old Office PCs and throwing in graphics cards for really cheap. So 340 bucks, you're gonna be able to play 1080p esports and AAA titles. We're gonna show you just how to do it. Super easy to put together and it's easy for you to replicate it at home. And we're gonna show you guys exactly how to build it after we're from today's sponsor. One of the most important parts of any gaming setup is the chair. Without proper support, it's super easy to end up with back pain due to bad ergonomics. That's why we're here to tell you about FlexiSpot and their amazing C7 ergonomic office chair. The C7 features a self-adaptive dynamic system, which means the lumbar support is able to detect subtle changes in posture and adjust itself to ensure constant support. Paired with the adjustability of the height, armrest, headrest, seat depth, and seat tilt, you truly can achieve a customized fit. The forward seat tilt is especially nice as it relieves pressure and helps to alleviate fatigue during those long gaming or work sessions. The C7 also has a 20 inch seat, which gives plenty of room to sit cross-legged while still providing great ergonomics, which is perfect for gremlins like some of us here in the office who sit with super goofy sitting positions for a long time. And if you're not fully sold, the C7 comes with a 30 day free return window and a 10 year warranty. And if you wanna save, you can use the code on screen to save 30 dollars on your order. If you're interested in learning even more about the FlexiSpot C7 or you want to buy it today, check out the links in the description down below. Big thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. All right guys, before we show you guys how to upgrade this Z440 with the graphics card in storage to get it ready to game, I'm gonna show you guys the very beginning step. Configuring your Z440 from PC server parts, the company we do recommend you buy these from because it comes with a warranty and we also have a special discount code to save even more money using the links down below. And they all show up refurbished out the gates. So you don't have to worry about thermal paste, cleaning a bunch of dust from an eBay PC. But you can do the eBay route if you wanna save a little bit more money or do some crazy deal hunting. But this right here is is the easiest option if you're watching this at any time of the year. They have a ton of inventory of these things and we're easily able to customize them to our liking. Now, as you can see, we're in the build your own custom Z440 workstation section. Again, link in the description down below. Use that discount code to save some money. And we do have to go through this configurator to pick the parts we want. Now for this build, we decided to go with the E5 1650 V3, which you see right here, adds about 999. But as you can see, there is a wide range of Xeons you can go with. In all honesty, I would probably stick with the 1650 V3 is the best bang for buck, but if you want to go up to the 8-core variant, you could easily go with an 8-core 16 thread 1660 V3 for only $24 and go all the way up to some crazy high-end CPUs. There are a ton of options. 16-core Xeons even if you want to with the Z440 making it very versatile if you feel like you need more cores, but we're focused on gaming. 1650 V3, that's what we're going to go with. The RAM configuration we're going to go with is 16 gigs. Now, this system does support quad-channel memory, and to simplify it, it basically means you'll have more memory bandwidth if you populate all the RAM slots in this system. But for our sake, again, with gaming, we're just gonna go with two eight gigabyte sticks at 16 gigabytes. If you wanna go get 32, I highly suggest getting at least four sticks, eight sticks if you want even more performance, but four sticks is ideal. But we're gonna go ahead and go with 16 gigabytes here. As you can see, we can do two by eight. And if you wanna spend a little bit more money, you can do four by four to populate more RAM slots. But again, to make it simple, we're gonna go with this. It's only 34 bucks. And then we gotta go into the drive category, which you can get an SSD from them, or you can follow the guide and buy an SSD yourself. Yourself. Their SSD pricing is actually pretty fair, but in our opinion, you do save a good amount of money buying an SSD on Amazon still. So we really recommend you do no storage option here. And then from there, you have your Z440 ready to go. No operating system or anything like that. You just add it to the cart, use the discount code in the description. And once your Z440 shows up, play the rest of this video and we'll show you guys how to upgrade it with a graphics card, add your own storage and get to gaming. All right, HP Z440. We opted for the $140 version, which comes with no storage, but you do get 16 gigs of RAM. You get this really nice Xeon that performs very closely to a 6th gen i7. Look at the size of this cooler. It's huge. Does that like frame come off? I'm learning. We're learning. Okay, so that comes off like so. Maybe. Almost. There we go. Hey, there we go. Now look at that. There's like a little fan that connects with like a little six pin inside of here. That's, oh, there's double fans. So that's to cool the RAM actually, which I don't think we have enough RAM to cool. But as you guys can see, we have two SK Hynix sticks. They're 2666 DDR4. They're both eight gig sticks, uh, but you can add up to eight sticks of RAM inside of this build, which in theory could be quad channel. Uh, really large aluminum tower cooler that has like a slightly smaller uh, than 120 mil fan. But honestly, that's like super adequate compared to some of the other cooling solutions that we've seen. This power supply looks massive. What is this thing? 700 watts. Quite a bit to work with now. They do only give you two six pins, which is kind of odd, I guess for the area, you know, when you had like GTX 900 series, a lot of those use six pins. So we are gonna have to use this little guy here. This is a six to eight pin adapter. And from what we've seen, whenever you're adapting these six to eight pins, so you basically have positive power here. And then these black ones, I think in theory are all 
grounds. And so you just have two extra black ones that are daisy chained onto there, so two extra grounds. So in theory, it should be nice and safe, definitely a lot safer than the SATA or Molex 2.8 pin adapters. And the CPU to be exact is the E5 1650V3, which is a six core 12 thread processor. So it's a pretty upgradable build. We got multiple PCIe. Uh, I don't believe this has any NVMe on it. So we are gonna be using a SATA SSD to upgrade it. Uh, we just have a silicon power one terabyte um, so we can fit lots of games on this. Cause I, I think this is gonna be a really capable system. So you might as well make it a little bit future proof. And then for the GPU, we have the ASRock Challenger 6600, which is an eight gig GDDR6 card. You can get them on eBay uh, for pretty good pricing. I mean, we're talking like well under 200 bucks nowadays. So if you wanna go ahead, we can go ahead and slap in the SSD and then I'll slap in the graphics card and we'll show you guys along the way how to do this. And again, they pretty much handle thermal paste and all that on their own on their end. So you really don't have to worry about it once you pick one of these up. All you gotta do is install your SSD and your graphics card. All right, so SATA data, SATA power. And I think in typical fashion, I don't know if they really give us a good spot to put this. Let me go ahead and pull this out. You don't see anything on here. It's kind of designed for hard drive. Some of these may come with um, SSD mounting. So I see a pretty good spot. I think I can get a little, uh, so we're gonna need a fine thread. Once again, guys at home, if you are gonna use an SSD, you can now just leave it like this. You really don't need to screw it in, but we wanna make it look professional. Obviously we have PC Bros, our PC selling business where these PCs go, where you can buy one today using Toast Toasty Bros to save 3%. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get a screw in to uh, make this a little more secure. Yeah, see, I'm liking this one here. I just don't know if this screw's gonna reach or not, but let's, let's give it a trip. Oh. My screwdriver doesn't really reach. Oh, oh, did we get it? Did we get I think it? I got it. Hey. Yeah, so not the prettiest. It is a little bit floppy right now. So I might add, I could add a little bit of adhesive onto the backside too. Oh, it also doesn't, the screw's just like not even in. That might help. You know what, I'm gonna put some adhesive. I'm gonna do that. We're gonna put a little bit of, uh, so this is some, V8. This is good stuff to keep on hand if you do this a lot. If you don't do this a lot, then yeah, don't buy this. But if you like sticking things, maybe it's worth buying. Make this easy, we'll just take this out, put it onto here. Mm, mm. We're mm, thinking. Science. Make sure we don't pre-stick it. All right, so now we got a screw and double-sided adhesive. So I'm just kind of smashing it down. So yeah, a little bit crooked, but it is actually mounted now. It's not gonna move around. As Matt said, you really don't even have to mount these things, but <laughs> if you are gonna resell it, uh, I do recommend just doing something to just make it a little more professional. SSD. Done, not too bad. So you wanna go ahead and yeah, uh, have Matt do the graphics. Graphics card shouldn't be too hard, right? Okay guys, RX 6600, which again, Jackson mentioned, you can get these things for really cheap now. And uh, I think we've very comfortably deemed this the new RX 580, especially in the coming years, it's gonna get even cheaper and cheaper and it doesn't draw a lot of power. So speaking of power, I guess we'll go ahead and get this set up here. This is our six to eight pin adapter. I do like all these workstations that have these little like slots to keep the uh, power connectors. It's kind of satisfying to be able to just say, oop, I'm gonna pull one right there. We're gonna take our six pin power here. We're gonna go ahead and line it up with the clip and go boop, just like that. Now we have an eight pin, yay, easy peasy. Um, let me go ahead and put this back on. I don't think this is gonna cause any issues clearance wise, but I'd rather have this on to begin with so we don't try to put it on later and have trouble, but that just goes on like that. So we're gonna install a graphics card in this slot right here, the PCIe 3.0 by 16 slot. We're gonna go ahead and open this back up by pushing down on these tabs. It'll go ahead and release this cover that covers these PCI slots. And we're gonna go ahead and check and see where this GPU is going to line up on the topmost slot. So it's gonna be these two right here. It looks like ours came with one already out because there probably was some basic graphics card in there to begin with. We're gonna go ahead and remove this one. Okay, so we're gonna take our graphics card now. I'm going to line it up like so. Make sure to push down and boom, just like that, our graphics card is installed. And we're gonna go ahead and push that cover back over top to make sure it stays and does not move. Make sure it clicks. And then we're gonna take our eight pin power and plug it up like so. Click in once again, push that off to the side. And it's kind of right there, it's fine. And just like that, you have a PC for $340 that can game. One thing you're gonna see now is this piece right here is gonna not work because of our graphics card, but you can remove this, so don't worry. You don't have to game without your side panel. You just have to remove this screw right here, and that should allow you to slide this out. You can find a screwdriver that will work for this at your local convenient hardware store. But just buy one of these hundred dollar kits. Instead. Yeah, just buy one of these hundred dollar kits just for this one build for your three hundred forty dollar gaming PC. So we're gonna go ahead and take this. Put a little reach around here. Nope, that's too big. Let's try. Let's try fifteen. Just right. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this. It's coming out like so. And then this should just pop off. You don't uh, need it anymore. I guess this was kind of like a GPU support if the GPU would sit up like right next to it. But with our graphics card, we don't need it. Now let's get to gaming. 
All right, guys, we are playing Halo Infinite, and we are currently running 1080p. We got max FOV, and we're doing a medium preset. And we're gonna see what this cheap old PC can do with a little, little old Xeon. So far, though, we're looking pretty darn good, I'd say. And I mean, honestly, over 100 FPS? Sure. Works with me. Oh my god. I haven't played this in a while, but it seems like I haven't lost my touch. <laughs> Died. The whole team got came out hackers, buddy. I got I got three kills. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. But I just fall. I keep feeling like I have nowhere else to go, so it's off the map for me. This whole map is a lie. Light work. Oh god. I can't even hit him. No, I just jumped off the map. Oh! <laughs> what is this? Oh my god. Oh, we won. Ooh, that was really close. That was like 4750. All right, so Halo. Actually, like, stupid good. Obviously, a game like Halo, uh, using way more of the GPU because it's a AAA title, so we're gonna see how it runs an eSports title as well, of course. Let's go ahead and go to the next game. All right, guys, it is now time to play an eSports title. We got Fortnite running. Performance mode, we unchecked all the preload textures, DX12, high-res textures, stuff like that. That's all unchecked on launch. Unlimited frame rate, far be distance, low textures. And um, this will definitely stress that E5 1650v3 and uh, see if we'll have any sort of CPU bottleneck. The other game's been running really smooth, actually. And for the price point, really happy with the performance of this whole configuration with this Z440. And uh, yeah, if you do go shopping and buy one of these from PC server parts, you can get them in a wide range of different CPUs as well. You're really not stuck on the 1650v3. There's other CPUs you can get if you want to. It really just depends on where the limit is of price performance. I really think the best bang for buck is the six core 12 thread. Obviously, the RX 6600 is going to be awesome, but we'll go ahead and land here and see if we maintain 100 plus FPS. If we do, I think this is definitely a win for the price point. Oh! This one's pushing me. Oh, I'm going to die! Ah! Oh, I didn't get a kill! Light him up! Oh! I'm not really going to. No! I will not lose this kill. Okay, got him. Try again. Oh, there's the other person. Why are they running away from me? What is this? What is this? What are these bot activities? Hello? Third party? Bitjoy? What what is this this bot section going on here? Jesus Christ! That's seven bullets. Okay, I feel pretty safe doing this. Well, you know what, guys? I think Fortnite incredibly playable. Uh, 100 plus FPS. Uh, definitely some stutter here and there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but. Uh, if you cap the FPS to maybe like 120 or something like that, not too bad. And then you can hit these shots. Yes, guys, when you're getting shot, stop. Anywho, Fortnite runs great. Let's run some more demanding titles. Let's uh, run uh, the finals. Let's run our 3D Mark score. Let's throw in Helldivers 2 to mix things up a little bit and uh, see what this thing is capable of. But Z440, timeless machine with a lot of upgradability and honestly, being able to slap into GPU, buy these things really cheap for PC server parts, really good bang for buck. Let's go and run those other benchmarks and uh, wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking our super easy to put together $340 gaming PC. And I was super impressed being able to play a game like Halo at medium settings 1080p and get over 100 FPS the whole time. And esports titles were pretty good as well. Performance overall was really awesome with the Z440 and it's super easy to upgrade. And you can get this thing in a wide range of different configurations as we showed at the beginning of this video. But we decided to test this thing in some more demanding titles as well. And we got some interesting results. The finals 1080p medium settings with no FSR. We only got an average of 50 to 60 FPS. I will say the CPU 
is definitely limiting you in a game like the finals, which really stresses it. So it might not be ideal at this price range, but some other games like Helldivers 2, 1080p medium settings using quality FSR, the drop was a bit laggy, but once we dropped in, we settled out at 70 to 80 FPS. And of course that 30 mark time spy score ended up being 7,558, which for the $340 price point is a four cent per point average. So all in all price performance, very solid. We know these workstations are really awesome bang for buck systems, especially for PC server parts, whether you're going with a Z440 or a P520, you can definitely get some good value here. But let me know down below, would you consider building a budget gaming PC using the Z440? And if you do want to, links in the description down below will be affiliate links and they will help us out. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. This PC right here will be for sale at PC Bros. Tech with a one year warranty. PC Bros. Tech, we sell the gaming PCs we feature here on the channel and also other ones that are ready to ship and look absolutely beautiful. Whether you're on a tight budget or higher end budget, PC Bros. got you covered. Use go Toasty Bros. on checkout, you'll save 3% your next purchase. See you guys later. Bye bye.